The Oklahoma City Thunder made one thing very clear in their season opener against the Denver Nuggets, and it's that they're gonna have one of the most beautiful offenses in basketball this year. Now, they were already one of the best offenses in the NBA last season, ranking third in offensive rating overall and second in half-court offensive rating. But last night, they showcased a ton of new ways that they're gonna put pressure on opposing defenses this season. You obviously have the electric shot creation of Shea Gilgis Alexander and Jalen Williams, but as they've introduced new personnel and undergone internal development, they've also undergone an offensive evolution. With no shortage of new half-court sets that the Nuggets defense just wasn't able to handle, despite the Thunder making only eight of their 36 three-point attempts last night. So let's dive into how they did it. OKC was making use of this double drag, which is sometimes called a 77. And here, Dort's gonna set this first screen before rolling, and Chet's gonna set the second screen before popping out to the perimeter. Now Shea's gonna draw two off of the screen, and Brown has to make a hard closeout while Jokic recovers back to the paint. But the important thing to notice here is that Dort is gonna seal off Aaron Gordon. This keeps Gordon's attention on the paint instead of on Wallace lifting up on the perimeter. And even though it ends in a miss, it creates the exact kind of look that OKC is looking for. This is probably my favorite play that the Thunder broke out last night. And it's called a touch Miami action, which it involves Isaiah Joe passing to Chet so that he can get a handoff. And this is the touch part of the action. And then he's gonna flow right into a handoff with Shea so that Shea can come off it and get a ball screen from Chet. This is the Miami part of the action. And even though it doesn't create a direct advantage, it gets Shea on an island with Strother, and he's able to capitalize. Now, they ran it again later on. This time, they use it to set up the empty side pick and roll between Chet and Mitchell, and Mitchell's going to use it to get the ball to Chet in the middle of the floor so that he's able to spin into the mid-range jumper. The Thunder were making use of pin-in screens as a major part of their offense. Notice that the defense is loaded up on Shea, so there's going to be a ton happening over on the weak side of the floor. Dort is going to make this cut to draw attention away from the corner. Isaiah Joe is going to lift to bring Westbrook away from the corner, and Wallace is going to set this pin-in on Strother. And this is going to force a hard closeout that Chet is then able to capitalize on with a nice mid-range jumper. This was probably the standout play of the night for OKC. They're going to set multiple ghost screens before actually getting into the action. Jang is going to come up and ghost a screen with Caruso ghosting as well. And then Joe's going to come up to pretend to be the actual screener, but he's also going to ghost it. Now, what does this accomplish? Well, the first two fake screens get Caruso and Jang in the corner with a single defender. Joe's ghost screen gives J-Dub the chance to get two on the ball, and since Watson had to cover for Strother's late rotation earlier in the set, Saric has to cover for Watson by now rotating up. This leaves Westbrook as the lone man in the corner, and for some reason, he's just kind of chilling in the paint, and Jang is gonna get a wide open corner three off of it. Here, we'll see them set up in a horns formation with Chet and Wiggins near the elbow, and to keep Chet free coming off the pop, they have Wiggins set this pin in screen to keep Porter Jr. away, forcing yet another aggressive closeout, and this puts Denver's defense in rotation when Chet drives, and Murray gets caught ball watching so that when Chet finds Wiggins, Murray closes out too hard, and he gets Jokic one-on-one -on -one in the middle of the floor, and if Jokic is going to sag off like this, then Wiggins is going to be happy to shoot it. Now, with Denver starting to be more conscious of Chet popping, he started doing more as a roller, and this first pick and roll doesn't get him a clean look. But the second one, J-Dub makes the good lead pass, and he splits the help from Murray to finish at the rim and get the and one. This early screen by Joe gets SGA the matchup on Michael Porter Jr. with Chet setting a soft flare for him. This sets up another empty side pick and roll between Chet and Shea. The Nuggets have Jokic hedge and recover, denying the pass to Chet in space, but it results in Denver having three on the ball, leaving Joe wide open one pass away for the deep three. Kinda looks here like they were about to set up a double drag, but J-Dub is gonna dive and Chet flares. This clears the space for Chet to hit Michael Porter Jr. with the cross to his left after the right side drive is denied, and J-Dub keeps Gordon away from helping by staying pulled back near the dunker spot. Same setup here, but Denver's defense is now a lot more conscious of helping off their man, and that lets Shea do what he does best, which is creating a look in the mid-range. Denver got more aggressive with their pick and roll coverage on Shea, but they end up leaving Chet in space with a numbers advantage, and Dort is gonna flash to the dunker spot, and Chet makes the easy read for him to throw it down. 
Having guards hang out in the dunker spot is something that I think OKC might have taken out of Boston's playbook, and it was working really, really well for them. Jokic is originally matched up against Chet, but recognizing the Thunder are setting up for a screen, he has Murray pre-switch so Jokic can remain in the paint. Chet is gonna pop, and this keeps Murray away from the driving lane to provide any help, and Gordon gets stuck behind the play in a two-on-one. So J-Dub dumps it off to Joe in the dunker spot, and he gets the floater. Once again, OKC is gonna have Dort relocate down low near the dunker spot. Gordon is gonna shoulder check him a little bit, but this backfires because he loses track of Dort as he watches Chet draw three defenders, and Chet's gonna slip it to Dort on the cut, and he gets the and one. Here, it doesn't create an open look initially because Jokic is ready for it, he's expecting it, but Joe takes advantage of the mismatch, and he gets the mid-range shot off over him. This play is really cool because they feed Chet in the high post to set up the stagger action with Shea coming to get the handoff, and when Chet rolls, Shea finds him with the pocket pass to let Chet fly for the slam. Again, they're gonna start with this touch Miami play, but Denver's gonna defend it really well, so they have Shea come get the handoff from J-Dub to get Shea the Murray matchup. The defense has to help Murray in these scenarios, so Jokic gets pulled off of the weak corner, leaving Chet open, and he can attack the closeout to get the open mid-range jumper. They break out this early pin-in screen for Chet again, allowing him to drive and initially collapse the defense, and J-Dub's gonna develop the advantage further to get into space for the easy runner. One of the staples of OKC's offense is that nobody's gonna stand still for more than just a second. Shea is driving in transition, and it's gonna prompt Michael Porter Jr. to bring the help, and this triggers the back cut by Kaysen Wallace, and he's rewarded for it when Shea dumps it off to him for the floater. Another key tenant is how OKC handles nail help. Wiggins is gonna get Strother to bite on the pump fake, so he's gonna drive, prompting the nail help from Watson, so he passes it to J-Dub. This forces Watson to make a hard closeout, and now it's J-Dub's turn to drive. Now Wiggins' responsibility here is to pull out to create space for J-Dub and to keep Strother honest, and it clears the lane for J-Dub to take off. They set up a simple horns formation, and it flows into a pick and roll with Shea and Chet, putting Gordon behind the ball, and Chet gets it on the short roll to beat Jokic in the drop. Now, even with both Shea and Chet on the bench during this game, it's easy to forget that OKC has guys like Aaron Wiggins that can turn it up as shot creators when they need to, hitting this really tough turnaround on Strother. On this inbound play, he screens for J-Dub, who then screens for him so that he can get another screen from Jang, and it gets him a favorable matchup against Saric, who the Thunder were happy to target all night whenever he was on the floor. Here he gets Strother on the wing, and he gets him to leave his shoes on the pump fake, and this is where Wiggins is able to make a ton of money when he's attacking aggressive closeouts, and this is a tough finish against the good defense of Peyton Watson. And he even brings the ball up the floor here, and recognizing Saric is not honoring him, he just steps back a bit and fires up the three. We saw it again in the fourth quarter, Saric doesn't step up to him in transition, and instead of taking the three, he takes the space, and with Saric kind of being a turnstile on defense, he gets to the rim with ease. What's wild is OKC really didn't even play their best game in terms of overall shooting efficiency, yet offensively, they were doing a ton of really, really good stuff. And this team isn't even at full strength yet. I imagine they're gonna pull even more stuff out of the playbook once Isaiah Hartenstein's back. If you guys like game recaps like this and you wanna see more, be sure to let me know in the comments below. I know I don't normally do this, but if you wanna see more like this, I'm more than happy to do it. So if this is your first time here and you enjoy stuff like this, consider leaving a like and subscribing. It really helps out the channel a ton and allows me to continue doing this. Regardless, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.